If you're looking for your first developer job, you've probably heard that you need to make a portfolio. Now, do I think developer portfolios are necessary for landing your first job as a programmer? For that first, maybe second job, having a developer portfolio, something like a detailed website or a very thorough GitHub repository to showcase your work is pretty important, especially if you are self-taught. The thing is a detailed portfolio, like your own personal website that showcases all of your projects are really only necessary for your first and maybe second job as a programmer, at least in my opinion. And to be quite frank, I didn't even create a portfolio until after my first internship. Granted, it was low paying and I got pretty lucky with the interview process. Regardless, after you gain a solid amount of experience in the industry, people generally don't look at your personal portfolio. This is because the work you've done on real world projects should speak for itself. The set of real world projects will essentially become your new portfolio. But like I said, for that first, maybe second job and until you start getting real world experience in the industry, I do think developer portfolios are pretty important. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts when building up your first developer portfolio. But before we dive into that, let's first talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Hostinger. Hostinger is a web hosting platform to over 29 million users in 178 countries. And whether you're creating a personal website for your portfolio, or you need to host your own projects in general, Hostinger has got your back. So I have this portfolio website right here that I've put together using React. And I'm gonna walk through how you can easily host your own React web app using Hostinger. Okay, so I have the one year premium shared hosting package here, and that gives me a free domain for one year, which is super awesome. So the first thing I'll do is register my domain, kennygundermandev.com. After that, I'll fill out the registration details and then turn on who is privacy. So now that we've registered our domain, we'll go ahead and go to this hosting tab and set up our shared hosting. Now, Hostinger integrates really well with WordPress applications, but we do have a React app here. So we'll go ahead and click migrate my website, then click upload website. We'll skip uploading any files for now. We'll go ahead and use the domain that we just registered and then finish the setup. This will take us to our hosting panel where we can scroll down to the file manager Click into that, navigate to the public HTML folder, and then create a new file called .htaccess. We'll go ahead and paste this snippet from the Hostinger documentation for setting up a React app. Save that file and then go ahead and open up our terminal and build our React app. After that, we will zip our new build folder. Go back to the Hostinger panel, scroll down to import website, upload the build zip, and voila, our website is hosted. Now you'll see that our website is not secure by default, but another thing that I really like about Hostinger is that with the premium hosting, you get a free SSL certificate and you can easily install it with just a click. If this sounds interesting to you, make sure you go to hostinger.com slash Kenny and use my coupon code Kenny at checkout for up to 91% off. If for whatever reason you find out that Hostinger doesn't meet your needs, there is a 30 day hassle free money back guarantee. Thank you to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the portfolio do's and don'ts. Okay, so let's quickly define a portfolio. Really, it's just a collection of projects that showcase your ability to code and they come in all shapes and sizes. It could just be your very thorough GitHub repository or it could be a website that showcases all the projects that you've worked on. The web portfolio is the approach that I've personally used in the past. So what should your portfolio look like if you have zero prior experience? First off, you shouldn't put anything on your portfolio that has taken you less than a couple days to code. Small projects don't really showcase your ability. When I made my very first portfolio after my first internship, I did have a bunch of real world applications
solutions that I worked but on. But I also included a lot of clutter apps that took me a few hours to make, like a JavaScript reaction tester project that I straight up just copied from a Udemy tutorial. And that's another thing to note, it may be tempting, but you really shouldn't put tutorials on your resume or your portfolio, especially if they were made in less than a day. Look, we've all been there. Like I said, I've been there. But if an employer is reviewing a resume for a new hire and they only see tutorials that they recognize, like an Instagram clone or a small one day project, they may just immediately assume that the candidate is lacking in knowledge and may just pass up on the interview altogether. So try to stay away from small one day projects and tutorials that you've copied verbatim. Now there are exceptions to everything. If you fold a tutorial to get the base idea of a project and you significantly changed it or added more features to it, then I think you would for sure get a pass. For example, if you fold an Instagram clone tutorial and then you modified it to be more than just posting random pics, maybe you make it Instagram for dogs and you can only upload images of dogs. And the way that you verify users are only posting pictures of dogs is by hooking it into something like a machine learning service that will tell you with 90 something percent accuracy if the image was a dog or not. If it wasn't, then the image just wouldn't upload altogether. You could call it Dogstagram, and there you go, there's my million dollar idea. Make sure to give me at least 50% when your company goes mainstream. Anyways, the idea is that you used the Instagram clone for the base setup of the project, but then you innovated on top of that. That's kind of where I'm trying to get at here. But if it's a straight up copy, then it's probably not going to benefit you to put it on your portfolio. Okay, so those are the don'ts of a portfolio. Let's go ahead and talk about the do's. A portfolio with two to three really thorough projects will shine significantly better than a project with 20 small one week projects. When building something for your portfolio, you should really build a unique ish idea that you can really sink your teeth into. And when I say unique, I don't mean the next big startup idea. It can be something as stupid as the dogstagram idea that I mentioned. The important thing here is that you build your own thing from the ground up or at least innovate on top of something that already exists. Anyways, your portfolio items should be CRUD apps that interface with a web API, preferably a web API that you've developed. Now CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete, which you're probably familiar with at this point, but just in case you're not, I'll put some links in the description that you can check out to get a better idea of what a CRUD app is and how to build it. Also, when making this portfolio project, now is a great time to get familiar with version control or more specifically, Git. Git is something that I didn't fully learn until after I got to my first full-time programming job, and it was something that that I wish I would have gotten familiar with from the get go. Also, it is a great time to start getting familiar with Git repository hubs like GitHub or Bitbucket if you haven't already. I would recommend using GitHub for your own personal projects. When you first start developing a portfolio item, you can break down all the tasks or features on that project into smaller tickets on GitHub for tracking purposes. And when you start development on a new feature, you can create a unique branch where you do all that feature work. And once you're done, you can merge those changes into your main project branch using a pull request or just straight up merging it in. Anyways, breaking down features like this is a great way to get your feet wet with what you'll actually be doing on the job with other developers. I have a project on my GitHub profile where I demonstrate how to do this and that project is called Snackchat. We don't have to get into the project specifics. You can read the readme if you want. But like I said, I created separate tasks for each new feature I needed to develop. Once I did that, I wrote the code for each new feature and then added the code to my main project branch. You'll be working with version control at every job you start, and you'll also be working with software similar to GitHub, maybe Bitbucket, GitLab or even GitHub itself. These are all essentially the same thing and really once you've learned one, you've learned them all. Regardless, breaking down your portfolio projects into smaller tasks and then committing them incrementally to your GitHub repository is not only a great way for you to get your feet wet with what you'll actually be doing on the job, but it essentially documents your entire portfolio project so a potential employer could go in there and see all the work that you've done over the entirety of the project. Also, it leaves the door open to have other developers come on and work on the the project with you. If you can build a project or a startup idea with other programmers, that is a killer portfolio item. 
right there. Okay, so, so far we've talked about four things that you should consider when making a portfolio. Number one, a couple large scale projects are significantly better than a hundred small ones. Number two, you should make a unique-ish CRUD app that interfaces with a backend API, preferably one that you've developed. Number three, use Git when making code changes. And number four, use GitHub or similar software to task out your project and showcase your work. Now, honestly, if you have a couple really thorough projects on your GitHub and a really nice profile readme, this might be all you need to do to land an interview or that first job. But when people think of a developer portfolio, they traditionally think of something like a personal website that showcases their work. Having a website that is something like yourname.com could be a good idea. This is what I did. I had Kenny Gunderman, Com. If you're a front end developer, you could have something like an about you page, a contact section. You could showcase the other websites that you've built, maybe provide links to those websites. And if you can, always try to link out to your code, especially if it is a personal project. If you're a back end developer, you may have to get a little more creative, but you can still list out your portfolio items, link out to the GitHub repository, and provide a thorough explanation of what you did on that project and why. I'm a mobile developer, so for my portfolio, I just uploaded videos and screenshots of mobile apps that I built and provided descriptions of what that project was, a bit about the technical implementation, and then my role in that project. You should get creative with how you present your work on your portfolio, but honestly, it doesn't have to be insane. There are a ton of flashy web portfolios out there. I've never really made a flashy portfolio because I didn't really feel like it was worth the effort, but a good rule of thumb is make sure it's modern looking, make sure it's functional, don't clutter it with a bunch of stuff that's totally unrelated to programming, and make sure it's responsive. For my portfolio I made around three years ago, uh, I used a website builder to make it. If your specialty is not in web development, I think you can get a pass with this. I specialize in mobile dev, and at the time, I just wanted to build something quick. All right, so that is my advice for the do's and don'ts when making a portfolio. Good luck on landing your next job. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. If you did, I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next one.